Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. One of the most annoying thing is trying to find a key to open a lock. Well, in your bodies, there are some chemicals that work similarly. Trying to find other chemicals to unlock them. Well, today we're going to look at the properties of enzymes. Now, if you stay to the end of this lesson, I will have a bonus for you. Now, what are enzymes? Now, enzymes are described as biological catalyst. Biological refers to they work in living organisms. And catalyst means they are used to speed up chemical reactions without being used up. So, to define enzymes they are chemicals that work in living organisms that are used to speed up chemical reactions without being used up now before we go any further i want to give some examples of enzymes now three broad categories of enzymes even though there are many enzymes in our bodies but these three we're going to focus on today we have those that are called carbohydrates an example of that will be amylase, sucrase, lactase, and many more. We also have proteases, and two examples here are pepsin and trypsin. We also have lipase. Now, something I want you to note is that generally, if you see a word with a suffix O-S-E, it is referring to sugar, such as sucrose, lactose, glucose, maltose. And once the word ends with the suffix ASE, then they generally be enzymes. And so, for example, amylase, sucrase, protease, and lipase. All right, so those are some examples. Now, this is very, very important for you to understand what will be in this lesson. And I want you to note that enzyme-aided reactions can be of two types. One, they can be a catabolic reactions. And catabolic reactions are reactions that break down large molecules to smaller molecules. Okay, so remember that catalysis, remember the word C for cut. Okay, you cut them up into small pieces. And anabolic reactions, those are reactions that build up large molecules from smaller molecules so catabolic to break down and anabolic to build up all right so now let's jump into the way enzymes work and we're gonna look at the properties of enzyme but it's very important for you to understand why enzyme work in a specific way so enzymes work in specific ways because of two main reasons. One, because enzymes are proteins. And two, because they have specific shapes. So all of the properties will be explained around these two characteristics of enzymes. Enzymes are all protein and they have specific shapes. So let, let's look at now the properties of enzymes. And the properties of enzymes include, one, that enzymes are proteins. Enzymes are reusable. Enzymes are substrate-specific. Enzymes are sensitive to pH. So once the level of pH change, the enzyme reactivity may change as well. Enzymes are denatured by high heat. Enzymes are inhibited by poisons. So let's go into each property right now now the first one here is that enzymes are proteins now for them to be protein that the simple means that they are made up of many amino acids linked together and are folded into specific shape so since they are proteins they will have specific shapes because protein are folded to form various shape so within an enzyme you will see long chains of amino acids and because of this long chain of amino acids, then they will form into specific shape. Now, another property here, that enzymes are reusable. 
And I want to look at this now carefully. I want to point out a few things right at this moment. Is that yes, enzymes are used to speed up chemical reaction, but them themselves are not being used up in that chemical reaction. And hence, at the end of the reaction, enzymes are able to reuse or take part in other chemical reactions. So this demonstration here is showing you. Let's say, for example, this is an enzyme with a specific shape. It fits with a substrate with a specific shape to fit into this just like a lock and key situation now what you get as a result is what they call an enzyme substrate complex so please make a note of that and where the enzyme and the substrate meet to create a reaction is called the active site so once they are joined at that point for the chemical reaction to take place is called the active site and then at the end of it when the substrate breaks down as in catabolic reactions the you get the products so what you get as a result will be the products whatever this substrate break down into is called the products and of course you get the exact same enzyme at the end so notice what you started out with as the enzyme you get it at the end the only thing that changes with is the substrate okay so enzymes are able to be reused because they do not break down neither do they take part in the chemical reaction now another property is that enzymes are substrate specific just like a lock and key okay so enzymes can only react with certain food or nutrients based on their shapes and for this reason enzyme work enzymes work in a lock and key fashion so i have three examples here and you will see which will work which will not work so for example if you have amylase and starch just for example the amylase and the starch can lock into each other and a reaction can take place if you have the same amylase but you have a fat instead because of the shape of the fat it cannot fit into the amylase hence there will be no chemical reaction if you have the same amylase and instead now you have a protein the shape of the protein and the amylase will be totally different hence they cannot fit into into each other hence no chemical reaction so enzymes are substrate specific they only break down specific food or nutrients the other property here is that enzymes are sensitive to pH changes. So generally, the shape of enzymes can be, can be changed if pH levels are too high or too low. So it will damage the structure of the enzyme. So the shape of the substrate can also be changed as well. Okay, so both the enzymes and the substrate can change but generally the ph level will affect will affect the enzyme now taking for example this is a normal enzyme right here and it will go in its optimal ph level then it will create a good and fast reaction however if the ph is too high or low then the shape notice right here the shape of the enzyme is now changed and hence the substrate or food cannot lock into it hence there will be no reaction another property of enzymes is that enzymes are denatured by high heat high temperatures will change the shape of enzymes now proteins cannot withstand high heats now, for example, if you, put a, if you put an egg in a frying pan, what happened to it? You know, this become harder and it changes structure. It's not jelly-like, not flowing anymore. So once you put even a piece of meat into a pot, the structure of the meat will change. The same thing happened to enzymes because enzymes are proteins, okay? And so since they're proteins, very high heat will change their shape. And the same thing happen here if it's normal shape the enzyme can work properly however if the temperature is too high then it will denature the enzyme and hence the substrate cannot fit so the word you're going to look out here for now is that enzymes are what denatured which simply means their properties and shape are changed all right 
Now, another property here is that enzymes are inhibited by poisons. And what poisons will be like is they're blocking that keyhole. So just as if you have a lock and you stuff something into that lock, you're unable to fit the key in. So the same thing happened with poison. So poison now can bind to the structure of enzymes and prevent the active site from working. So there is no more effective binding of the substrate and the enzyme. Hence, there will be no reaction at the active site. So taking, for example, under, under normal circumstances, the enzyme and the substrate will fit together, create a reaction. But however, if a poison is now binded to or bound to the enzyme, what you're going to realize now, the active site is no longer available for a reaction. In fact, the substrate may not even be able to fit inside of the enzymes. So again, simply if you put a piece of paper or a foil paper inside of a lock, there's no way you can put the key in to open that lock. So the same scenario is happening here. And now for our bonus, what I promised. Now, just to finish this off, I want to show you some examples of enzymes-aided reactions. Now, starch, for example, is a nutrient. And in our mouth, starch is broken down into maltose. Notice the OAC for sugar. Maltose is sugar. And it is broken down by the enzyme salivary amylase. Now, the maltose is taken to our small intestine where it is broken down by pancreatic amylase into glucose. So, the end product of the digestion or the catabolic reaction of starch or you can simply say carbohydrate because starch is a carbohydrate you will get glucose so the end product of the broken down of starch or the hydrolysis of starch or the catabolic reaction of starch you get glucose so the end product here is glucose another bonus example here is that proteins for example Proteins are broken down by pepsin in our stomach and turns and turn into polypeptides. The polypeptides now brought to the small intestine where it is broken down by trypsin and trypsin is produced by the pancreas again and you get as an end result amino acids. So simply when proteins are broken down by enzymes, the end product is amino acids. And now the last bonus for you today is that for example, fats. Fats are broken down by bile. Bile is not an enzyme. Rather, it is a salt. So you can say bile salts. So fats are broken down by bile first in the fatty droplets. The fatty droplets are brought to the small intestine where they are broken down by lipase. And lipase is also produced by the pancreas. And what we get as an end result from the digestion or the broken down of fat is fatty acids and also glycerol all right and now we are at the end i hope you enjoyed this lesson and so if you want to see more lesson like this in the future please subscribe and share see you in the next lesson